you know oh, something it was just a, a conversation I was having with a very dear friend yesterday and subhanallah she had not heard of Basila like many others and we named it a hidden gem literally we went to the website we learned more about what Basila Connections does and truly it is a hidden gem that's that needs to be revealed unveiled to the community mashallah there is so much that you do I just want to know, I want to know the story. I want to know how it came about, your role in it. Please. Sure. Um, yeah, the story is is interesting. You know, um, you know, I, I had a pleasure of talking to you earlier about this, but really just a little bit about my background. I am a single mother as well, um, and I have four daughters, and um, I also have gone through divorce. And so I think one of the, you know, one of the reasons why this came about was because I also experienced it. And, um, you know, combined with my experience and professional background, it, it sounded like something that, you know, needed to come about. But really, the behind the scene really was that, you know, as you're going through divorce, there's so many things that happened. So many things, multiple factors are played into that. Um, and one of those factors is community support which I don't think, subhanAllah, that a lot of our a lot of our communities had at that time. Now, I got divorced about three years ago. And, you know, and as I was kind of going through my training, um, you know, becoming a social worker, talking to people, I came to realize, you know, a good friend of mine said that, you know, there's so many single parents out there. There's so many single mothers out there. There's so many people who have gone through divorce, yet they're suffering silently. So do something about it. And, you know, at that time, you know, we just, I just kind of said, okay, you know, I, I understand. But as I spoke to a lot of people, and I, I actually came across a lot of, um, a lot of single parents as well. And some of the things that they were saying was, you know, was shocking to me as well, where they felt that the community X out. They felt that the community just didn't care for them anymore. And so I realized that, subhanAllah, in my own journey, one of the greatest or one of the greatest blessings that I had was support. And realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed that support upon me, I realized that not a lot of people had that support. So, you know, I actually attended a lecture um, and uh, Mufti Kamani actually said this in a lecture. And, he, and you know, he, he said it beautifully that wherever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went, he created a community first. But what does that mean? What does the community mean? A community means not just people together living side by side, but people who actually come together, help one another in their most distressed times. And that was the basis. That was the foundation because we wanted to be able to create a collective community, create a movement that really, you know, in the mindset of helping our most vulnerable populations. Now, there's so many things that, you know, our community needs. And of course, there's not a lot of holes that we're going to be able to fill. But really, we thought about what is the one thing that our community doesn't have? And sadly, it was that, that there wasn't any hands-on support for the divorce population. Unfortunately, the divorce, you know, numbers and cases are high. And we then thought about, okay, what are the organizations out there that do support? And subhanAllah, you guys, NISA has been around for a long time, and it's, it's a wonderful resource and a wonderful, you know, organization that helps but then we also thought about a little bit more deeper that sure it's for domestic violence victims but what about the victims or what about the the divorcees that don't fall under that category and so we wanted to kind of think outside of the box and we realized that okay we have people that talk to us about it but then everybody goes home so what's next what else is there and so thus you know Wasila came about um, and, you know, the name Wasila means a means to, you know, going, getting closer to Allah, a means. And so we wanted to be the means to ease um, for people. And so with that, you know, we started working on Wasila Connections, me and, um, you know, a few of our board members. Um, we have, we all collectively came together and mashallah, we were able to create this. We, we are a nonprofit organization, a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And since then, actually, our launch, we launched in March 2020, where we launched our first support group. And when we launched that first support group, about 30 women, for single mothers actually showed up, or single women and uh, divorced women. And it was, you know, I will, ha I will have to be honest, it was shocking, right? It was shocking to see that many, that many people that were in the Bay Area specifically. So that's sort of, 
you know, kind of our history and our, you know, background as to why we started, what the basis were, and, you know, what our vision really is. And it's really to lend that supportive hand to those that are suffer- that are dealing with this. Mashallah, thank you so much. Um, I know there's been some overlap with, of course, with the work that Nissa does as well, um, right? I know that there's been some work and some collaboration with Nissa in the past and specific, specifically with, with Saha. Saha, would you like to, um, you know, chime in, inshallah, and kind of, you know, let people know about, of course, our mission and, and how the work of Basila you know, is 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 somewhat close in in its mission as well in creating that harmonious community, inshallah, and trying to fill those voids. Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Um, assalamualaikum. Um, yeah. So as far as Nissa goes, of course, you know we're a domestic violence organization. So um, one criteria for clients to receive service is that they're a domestic violence um, victim or survivor. And um, throughout the years, I think, especially since uh, Wasila started, you know, alhamdulillah, I I usually do refer clients, give information to them for these support groups for Wasila. And I believe, you know, a few of our clients or a good number of our clients actually do attend. Um, And I think this is a, you know, alhamdulillah, an amazing support for the ladies. Um, And I think it is, like Sister Sana mentioned, it is important that we provide that service not only to DV victims, um, it's, you know, whoever that's going through divorce um, and our single moms, um, of course, there are a lot of challenges that come about as a result. And my experience has always been that whether it's a domestic violence survivor or just a you know, not, not like a bad marriage and they divorce, they do tend to get, be isolated by community members, unfortunately, right? And um, I think Wasila is doing an amazing job of, um, um, you know, talking about really important topics, um, addressing it within community so that, you know, we as community members um, and also other organizations, we take steps so that we can services as well as you know pay attention to not isolating these women and children right um so ever since wasila started i think it's been um tremendous support for our clients um and all the feedback that i've received um regarding wasila has been positive alhamdulillah yeah so yeah so the thank you jazakallah khair sana for starting this really important uh you know, organization launching the support groups and um, providing that support for our clients as well as the general community. Absolutely, Bizarkallah. And have you, like, I was wondering any kind of research or is there data to, you know, is it that you'd like to share any statistics that you have collected over the years? Um, you know, of course, that warrants um, organizations like this to be around. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we actually launched a um, a survey um, about a couple of years ago, and it's actually on our website. Um, and we encourage people that, that that were divorced or that were thinking di- or about divorced or that were widowed to to sort of uh, you know to input their um, suggestion on that. And so, um, you know, we do actually. It's we had an overwhelming response of 197 participants. Oh. Um, and of those participants, 76% were female and 24% were male. I um, mean, I do, you know, I just want to say that not only do we cater to the single mothers or the divorced women, we also do cater to the men because I think part of the stigma of this, you know, uh, of this divorce is that a lot of everyone is just focusing on, you know, women or that, you know, generally a lot of women actually come, you know, a lot of women generally come forward, but we want to, we want to highlight that men also do go through this. Men also do have the emotional response. Men, you know, and so we won't, we don't want to leave out, um, leave that out. And I apologize. I have my kids at home. Absolutely and so, fine. No reason to apologize. Um, so, you know, and so we wanted to also make sure that the men were included into this. Um, I, I do apologize. I'm going to have to take a quick second break. No, no worries at all. No worries. So, Saha, uh, mashallah, you, like you said, you had referred clients. And alhamdulillah, we're very blessed. Like, Vasila, mashallah, also looks into serving the needs of, you know, like you said, um, men as well. SubhanAllah. Um, of course, our organization targets. And I was just talking to Saha, just saying, mashallah, it's amazing 
that um, this organization also caters to the needs of, of men as well, which absolutely is, is, is so important. Um, and just, I was just saying, subhanAllah, we've had people reach out and say, why doesn't this uh, kind of cater to the needs of men as well? There are, there are men who are victims of, um, of domestic violence or survivors of domestic violence as well. And, and we understand that, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one, subhanAllah, you know? And yeah, so, yeah. Do so, apologize, but I think this is the challenges, right? You know, being a single parent, what other support is there, right? You're doing it by yourself, or you have family members. Some people have the family members with them, and I'm, I'm actually very grateful for my own family members. Um, you know, my parents, my my siblings, and you know, just the support that they provide. So, you know, really, that that's also a crucial piece as we were looking into this. What are some things that people need, right? Um, and what helps their journey? And, you know, as we were looking at sort of the age sample for, um, you know, for our statistics, 45% were um, the ages between 26 to 35, 36% were from the ages of 36 to 45, 10% were 46 to 55. Um, and, you know, there was a little bit of um, a small, smaller percentage of those that were over 56 and um, about 6% those that were under 25. So between the ages of 19 and 25. Um, so, you know, and the other thing we, you know, we looked at was what were the causes of divorce um, and the causes of divorce, you know, one of the highest number of causes of divorce, divorce was emotional abuse. You know, we had about 120, you know, emotional abuse and that's, that's a lot. Right. And some of the other ones were emotional incompatibility. That was the other higher, um, higher bracket, which was just the incompatibility, um, and then the rest of them were financial distress, family interference, um, more than half said family interference, um, intimacy issues, and infidelity. Um, so these were some of the causes of divorce um, that our majority of our um, participants had noted. Um, in terms of the children, about 33% were, you know, participants reporting having no children, 23% reported having one child, and 21% you know, around 21% had two and about 20, another 21% had, you know, three plus children. Um, so those are some of the causes and some of the reasons. Now, the, you know, when we asked our, um, our participants, you know, what do they need support with? And the, you know, some of the things that they mentioned were fifth Islamic rulings. And, you know, it's interesting as I, as I do talk to a lot of, you know, a lot of single parents or those that are going through divorce, a lot of the number one questions come out is what are we exactly supposed to do? What does the Sharia say? You know, what is, you know, for women, what is our, idda, you know, what does it mean? Um, you know, some of them are, you know, questions are like, do I get my Sharia divorce first? What's a Sharia divorce? What's a civil divorce? What should I do first in that? Um, he's given me a civil divorce, but not a Sharia divorce. Does that count? So a lot of these big rulings and, um, you know, those were some of the bigger concerns, but amongst those were, financial obligations you know a lot of our populations you know when we look at it a lot of single moms you know you come out of a household of where generally speaking that the women are taking care of the children the majority of the time and so this forehead may not have um you know had a career or worked or had some sort of saving and so financial you know the financial obligations and and the financial needs are very high um and the other higher numbers were um, navigating the divorce process now divorce you know, as it, it, it emotionally, it's a, it's a challenging time, but then the process, what do, what do, what do people do? The legal process of it, it's a very, it, it adds on additional stress to our community members. It's like, what do we do? Who do we go to? This is going to cost a lot. How do we talk to, you know, who can we talk to about these things? What are my rights? Um, and of course the legal process and about 17, um, people, you know, said other, and so those are some of the, um, you know, some of the things that uh, our community, our community had uh, put on the survey. Now, in terms of supporting, um, you know, this, this question we like to ask, right? Oftentimes, you know, in a corporate world or in, you know, any of these systems, I've worked in the mental health field in the larger community or a larger um, system. And there's sometimes there's a disconnect between the higher ups and to those that are working on the ground. And so what Wasila aims to do is bridge that connection, right? As we are creating programs, we don't want to just create programs just to create programs. We want to be able to hear exactly what the need is. And then based on that need, 
create the programs that are going to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Um, now a lot of our, uh, a lot of our participants said, you know, co-parenting, co-parenting is a, is not, you know, a, a big thing because now we're having a lot of divorces that have children. And some of the things that, you know, people have to remember is that you still have to work with your ex-spouse. You, you know, they are the mother or they are the father of your children. And therefore, you're going to have to create a working relationship that's aside from the emotional challenges that you've had with them. Um, and it can be very difficult. And so we do understand that. And we do understand the challenges that come with it. I mean, as a, as a single parent myself, I'm going to say I'm not immune to that either. Um, so there is a, a lot of growing to do. But navigating that process how do you work with each other how do you work with the challenges that come and you know how can you and your ex-spouse come together and make this work for your children because really now the children are your main you know we we, we tell you know we have a co-parenting workshops and we tell our parents that you guys are now you know it, it's a business investment you have to look at each other as co-workers when you're dealing with each other um and you have to give that respect with each other um because the outcome are your children um so those are some of the you know some of the things and you know a lot of our our participants also mentioned you know in terms of the mental and emotional support aspect was some of the things that our uh, participant mentioned were how to move on and forgive them and forgive yourselves um how to deal with divorce and build your life again, um, healing, how to overcome the obstacle of a scar and moving on um, and, you know, healing or development of self-worth and confidence. So a lot of times we do realize that divorce does bring on, you know, there's, there's trauma. It is trauma. You know, those are transitions. It's a loss of a relationship. And so, you know, some of those things do take a, you know, take a toll on our individuals. Um, so those are some of the, you know, findings that we had um, mm -hmm. um, from our data that informed us that there's, there's a lot more work out there that we need to do. And um, you know, this is the data that we pull from to really think about what additional things, what additional programs are we going to make. Um, we actually, I'll take the moment to say that we have now uh, started a new survey which creates a little bit more, you know, we want to get a little bit more deeper information. Um, over the couple of years we've had this survey, now we're doing a more in-depth um, survey, which, you know, we're going to start creating things based off of that as well. So I do encourage participants to go to our website and, and uh, fill out that survey so that we can now move on to our next step of our um, organization. Thank you, Sana. Um, Saha, would you like to chime in? Uh, yes, actually, I uh, just wanted to respond um, to you when Sister Sana was taking, with, took a step away uh, regarding NISA services to men in the community. Um, I just wanted to make a clarification that we do provide services to men and women in the community. The only service that's only for women and children is the shelter and the transitional home. Um, so other services like the helpline, the, um, you know, legal services, which is by referral mostly, uh, support groups, which we, of course, refer. We do have a support group for um, uh, women, but we don't have one for men. Um, and maybe that's something, you know, we can work um, towards um, starting in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, housing support with benefits, any other case management is also provided for men in the community who are survivors of abuse. Uh, and I, I believe Nessa is also working on, inshallah, purchasing a shelter that would house both men and women, of course, separately in the future. So that's in the works. Um, so definitely our service is also for the for men. And as far as what Sister Sana just mentioned regarding support through the um, divorce and co-parenting, I think that's a critical um, you know, part of divorce and separation and uh, oftentimes you know, their challenges in the relationship, but once they separate, the couple separates and they divorce, it actually even escalates more, right? If, if the co-parenting is not managed well. And of course, the impact of that on the children is tremendous. So um, really glad to hear that Wasila. I actually myself didn't know that Wasila provides support with co-parenting because oftentimes I do get calls on the helpline from community members who may be divorced or in the process of divorcing, but that's not a domestic violence case, right? So it's it's great to know that was you know Vasila is an organization that I can refer those clients to. 
alhamdulillah, that's um, a huge, uh, mashallah, that is a, like, I noticed that subhanAllah, like you said, this, a lot of the problems stem afterwards, right? And just to have those support groups where you are catering to issues like co-parenting, like you said, like co-workers, now you're working, you're retraining their minds to now start working as partners and, and not, um, of course, as husband and wife, but as people who are coming together to try to be more amicable and, and look for solutions. I mean, even just going to your website, like you said, you literally, um, the way that you your programming is geared towards the needs of the community. What do they want? And even st what struck me was I loved the word etiquettes, etiquettes of divorce. Was mm -hmm. like, subhanAllah was beautiful. Absolutely. Like just um, what are those etiquettes? What are those steps? You know, how are we supposed to behave with one another? What are we supposed to do? And you're right, a lot of the times we are not aware and just getting educated, just bringing that awareness to the community um, is, is, is so critical and crucial, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the number one thing is education, right? Mm -hmm. When we educate ourselves and we learn, we become more informed and our decisions and the way we deal with things are changed, um, you know, or at least improved, um, you know, before, you know, you hear the, the term ignorance is bliss, but no, ignorance is not bliss. You know, you, you have to have that. Now, in in regards to that, with the etiquettes, we, you know, we did do, we did two workshops um, with the Sheikh Jabra. Our Sheikh Jabra is um mental health director and our religious director here just at before i forget i wanted to just say unfortunately um sheikh jabir was not able to join us today he was not feeling well so we wish him well and inshallah may allah grant him shifa but mm -hmm. he also plays a huge and instrumental part uh, you know in with vasila and with other organizations as well mashallah yes please elaborate yeah. Absolutely. He is, he's doing such an amazing work with Wasila. Um, he's, uh, he's gone ahead and we've done two workshops of etiquettes of divorce, so just Islamic rulings. And, you know, what is the sunna way? What is, you know, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, right? Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the things is a lot of our participants come and say, is, am I shaking the throne of Allah? Right. And so there's a stigma behind that. And so we, in relation to that, and you know, amongst all the the processes, Sheikh Jabber beautifully goes through each of those and really addresses the um, the participants. Um, you know, the format that we've always kept those workshops is that you know it's interactive, and so you know, when our participants come, you know, there are questions and answers, and you know, Sheikh Jabber does a wonderful job of you know doing icebreakers in between and getting that participation and getting people to feel comfortable um, because it is it is a, it, you know, it's a, it's a very challenging, um, it's a challenging subject, right? And there's a lot of intricacies involved in it. Um, so he does play a really, really big role in, um, in addressing those matters. Um, and, uh, also he is a, uh, he is an MFT as well. And he provides, you know, one of, one of the things that Wasila provides, um, in, in addition to all of the co-parenting and, and the fiqh, um, and workshops, we launched a, uh, we launched a therapy practice virtually. Um, and because, you know, with COVID, the world went, it, the world changed and we have to the world. And so, um, you know, our services became online and, and thus we were able to reach a larger crowd based off of COVID. So although it was, it's definitely not something we anticipated, but it was a blessing in disguise as well because our services reached a lot more people than we anticipated. Um, huge jump did you see a lot more people coming because i see that of course um there's a lot more you know programming towards mental health as well like with basila you cater to that as well mashallah so yeah um, you saw it a lot of people kind of virtually joining yes a lot of people did virtually join i mean for the just just for the etiquette's workshop we had about 70 people register um you know in that you know that helped reach out to a lot more people um you know, and so about 50, 60 people um, actually attended, but it was, it was a, we, we, you know, we were actually surprised. I'll just and be very that, honest. With you. Sorry. Is that like, is that men and women or just women, majority women? Like how does like the ratio to men to women? Is it, is it you a know, I, difference? <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> yeah, I will say, I will say about 20% were men. Um, okay. And, okay percent were women we actually you know speaking of men we did do a divorce workshop for men uh Sheikh Jabra actually led that I and we that. had you know 20 20 men come and you know that's still good you that's know one of the autos that Wasila likes to put is that you know I know 
typically sometimes we look at how many people are joining, you know, is it, is it worth it? Do we continue it? But really we, we look at it this way where even if we were able to help support one individual, that's, that's it. Yeah. So that's the model that we base it off. And so even if five come, Bismillah, you know, even if, you know, 10, 16, that's, that's a, that's a great number. And, you know, we're working towards increasing that and wanting to hear more about from men's perspective too. Absolutely. (laughs) And hence, you know, I, you know, of course we're missing Sheikh Jabir here today and I'm sure he would have given us some more insight, but of course your statistics numbers are showing, and it's, it's nice to see um, that men are joining and men are wanting to learn, you know, if anything, I think it makes such a huge difference. Education, like you said, is so important and not, and should not just be women having to learn it. It has to be a collaborative men and women. These issues, you know, pertain to both. And, um, it's much better that we can cater to, um, to both men and women. Saha, did you want to add anything to to, to, to that our discussion here? Um, no, I just had a question for Sister Sana. Are the services um, do the do the attendees? Is there a cost to it, or are the services pro bono? I, I'm assuming that the therapy, of course, would be would not be pro bono, and there may be financial aid available. How about the support groups and the workshops? Yeah. So when we first started, all of our support groups and workshops were all free to our attendees. Um, One of the things that we wanted to ensure was that it was accessible to everybody. Now, as time goes by, um, you know, we do understand that to uphold those and be able to to pay our clinicians, our mental health therapy, of course, is not uh, pro bono. It is um, it is pay. uh, It's fee by service. um, And we actually do have a sliding scale that uh, that we do offer our um, our uh, clients that come inshallah we are working towards having some funding that will help us provide more pro bono services um, in the therapy clinic aspect Um, some of the other services that we do actually offer now is uh, a professional religious consultation service Um, so this is with Sheikh Jabra as well Um, you know we want to be able to because a lot of times our attendees, when they come to, you know, the workshops such as etiquettes, there's a lot of case by case uh, requests or a lot of individual questions that we aren't necessarily able to answer in a group format. So we've created this resource where people can reach out to our website. They can go on our website and take a look at the professional religious consultation um, under our uh, mental health project uh, service and uh, request uh, to speak to Sheikh Jaber. Um, and, you know, we we have it as where even if Sheikh Jabra is unable to answer that, he will be able to get that answer from, you know, other scholars or muftis or um, anyone who is able to answer that. So we do offer that service as well. Um, our support groups are still free. Um, and I run those once every month, um, the first Saturday of every month from 1030 to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and it's one of those things are just, you know, I, I, I've been leading them for about a couple of years now. And, you know, we have a lot of people that are regulars, a lot of people that drop in. Um, so we have that open, you know, pro bono for everyone. And that's and, for both men and women? Um, so this, so the, actually the support group is only for single mothers and divorced. Um, we, we did do a couple of divorce workshops just specifically for men because we want to be able to give the privacy and the comfortability for both of our, um, genders, but inshallah, we are working on, um, adding more, uh, support groups for men in the future. So I, you know, I, and this is a question for both, um, of you, I obviously with the stigma attached and people not, you know, we still find there's a hesitance to go to um, for, for, for therapy or to attend support groups um, because they may fear that their story or experience may not be treated and kept confidential uh, or private. And so by others in the group, so of course you want to share and know that you're in a safe space or, you know, and, and it's going to remain within that group. I mean, how do you ease that worry for people? How do you make people feel comfortable? How do you encourage people to just come and talk and know that, you know, all your information will stay confidential. And these are, you know, I think very obvious worries for people who are reluctant to come for therapy or support groups, especially support groups, I think. Um, Therapy is something totally different. I I understand that. And I'd like to raise that question as well. How can we encourage more people to come um, and and attend therapy? Because sometimes it can absolutely work. And, you know, in in, in that relationship, um, but how do we encourage people to, to, to go for therapy but especially with with support groups how do we ease those fears 
of confidentiality and not breaching any confidentiality. Sure. Um, you know, the when we first launched the support group, um, I had all participants sign a waiver um, or sign a confidentiality agreement stating that they wouldn't, um, you know, outside of this, they wouldn't share anybody's personal stories. Now, um, of course, we only have control over mm -hmm. it. And, but one of the things that, you know, one of the mottos that we create, and it goes into our, the theme of our religion, our, our deen, is that your conversation is an amana. And yeah. very much value that. Mm -hmm. um, and we really do tell our participants that. And I think we've had quite a few participants come up to us and tell us that they felt comfortable. And they felt like this was different. They felt that they could come into the safe space. So really it's the atmosphere. Um, it's the constant reminder that this is our dean. We need to hold that. And so that's what Wasila continues to do. And that's what I continue to do. That when my participants join, I remind them of that confidentiality. I remind them of that trust that each of us have, are coming into the space. And we ensure that that trust is uh, maintained. Um, we do have a strict policy that if we do you know, in the event that a trust is breached, um, we do take, um, we do take that very seriously. So, um, that's something that we have, you know, honestly, it's, it's, it's about the feeling it's about coming in and, and understanding what we're about, what our motto is. And, and then of course, you know, feeling that comfortability, you know, we always, we don't want to force anyone for coming to something or sharing something. And one of the things I do mention in my support groups is that if you do not feel comfortable you don't have to share but participation is encouraged um so that's something that i do on a personal level in our groups saha would you like to say anything i i, I feel like of, of course um sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved right and so i'm just wondering how we can uh, my sure there is so much i i see the benefit in in, in these programs but how I, how do we really encourage or entice people who could really benefit from this I mean th what are the benefits of being in you know in a support group for somebody who's very hesitant to join just because they're afraid they're scared they've never been to one so how what's what's your take on that so I, I think you might you might be muted Zaha yeah sorry about that um yeah usually what I what I do to um encourage clients so our the support group that we have at nessa's for um our clients whether like present clients or past clients or we also would work with other organizations like my Mayatri and narika um and other you know, you know domestic violence organizations who refer clients um and um so usually what i you know what we what how i encourage clients to attend this to uh encourage them to try give it a try of course we talk about confidentiality something that we talk about uh pretty frequently and oftentimes by the time i offer the support group to the clients they already there's still a, already a level of trust built um uh, between me and that client and so it, it's a, i think a little bit easier than if we were to offer this to general public right because we already have a working relationship um, and of course, you know, we do um, explain, uh, go really in, uh, deep into the confidentiality and the importance of, um, and, and also normalize the fact that, yes, initially it may be uncomfortable and may be a difficult step. Um, so what I usually tell attendees is, you know, if you're not comfortable sharing, it's totally okay, take your time. But my experience is that after a few sessions, even those um participants who tend to be more quiet or um, more silent you know participants start sharing and because as time passes they feel more comfortable and I think my experience is that usually with groups there's always one or two participants who are going to be the ones that have a lot to say um, and of course the, we, we, we tend to kind of control that at some level but it's also good for others who have more difficulty sharing to hear others and that normalizes their own experience and as pa time passes, they feel more comfortable. Um, and lastly, I think, you know, it's really important um, for participants. What I encourage participants to do is, you know, tell others that they are attending support groups and that 
they're benefiting and that they feel safe. It's, it's a safe space, right? I mean, of course, not going into the details as far as who else is joining and the information about other participants, but just the fact that, hey, you know, I, I participate in a support group and I'm benefiting because I think the more we talk about it, the more others know that support groups are there and they're beneficial and, you know, confidentiality is really important and, and, and kept. Um, the more likely that those who may be more feel, fearful and reluctant might join. Um, so definitely, you know, talking about it and, and especially for those who attend and they feel like they're, it's a benefit to let others know without, of course, providing details. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to add right there, you know, I think when others hear other people going through um, their situation, a lot of times what I've noticed is that people who join, subhanAllah, it's just interesting that when people join, the stories are very similar. Mm -hmm. And so when someone hears another person's struggle or story or their experience, it makes them feel that they're not alone. And it makes them, it gives them the courage. It gives them that, that, you know, that light, that hope that, okay, I'm not going through this by myself. I'm going through this with others as well. And, you know, I find that a lot of, a lot of women that do join, like their, their stories are, they're intertwined and a lot of them benefit from hearing each other and hearing the experiences. I know, you know, I know with therapy, it's, you know, it's just one-on-one -on -one. you're, you're talking to your therapist, but it's a support group. It's in addition, it's an addition to the therapy, which provides more of that community feel. And, um, and that's what I think our support groups also help benefit others that do join is that, hey, I hear something. And, you know, Mashallah, we've had, we've had participants that get to a great place and say, you know what, this was great and I'm good right now. And so that's, that's really what our aim is. Alhamdulillah. Um, just coming back to something you had said earlier about the kind of support that you had received through, you know, your own personal experience. I mean, who would you say kind of was that pillar, that rock for you? Um, of course, Mashali, you have these additional support groups, but, you know, um, family, of course, is, 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 is huge, but not it's not always, it's, it's a given, right? It's not a given that everybody has supportive parents or siblings or so. Mashallah, how have, you know, with your journey, how have you, Mashallah, survived so amazingly, Mashallah, to the point where you found a purpose, a calling, and now you are, Mashallah, out there catering to the needs of others and wanting to help others into similar situations. It's, it's beautiful, Mashallah, really, truly amazing to see that. Such an example, really. Zagalok, Um Before I share that, I want to say that Every single thing was an opportunity. Everything that I went through was an opportunity to learn something, whether it was a rectification of myself, whether it was a um, lesson for me or a growing opportunity for me or a reassuring, a reassurement from, from Allah. I attribute every single thing that and every single person that has helped me through this journey, a, a gift from Allah, you know. We talk about, you know, we talk about like the after, the post care, right? But a lot of times, a lot of this starts pre divorce. And, you know, that pre divorce or that contemplative stage is really crucial because that actually is the stepping stone of moving forward or, or even staying in the relationship, whichever way it goes. And subhanAllah, I think for my own personal journey, I, you know, I was a, I was, in my last year of my master's program and I was learning to become a therapist. And part of that training was becoming more self-aware. And what I've realized is that when you know yourself, you know, Allah. and so there's a lot of, this was a big journey for me. And I think, you know, when leading up to, you know, my divorce, I had, I did have family support. I had sibling support. I had parent support. Which was which was really a crucial part. I, I want to highlight this because it is only that gets us through. You're with them day to day. So if you're home, when you're walking into your home, it's not that safe space, or you're walking into your family's home and your family isn't being that supportive, you feel alone. So really a big chunk of that is family. And my family was supportive. But in addition to that, 
I had scholars who I reached out to and that were very, very supportive. Um, very, you know, and they give, they give an understanding They're you know, it's not a biased understanding. It's a very, you know, it's unbiased because they're going based off of, you know, just the, the Sharia, the fiqh, and then also the situation. And so not only did they heard me out, they also heard my spouse out as well. And so really that unbiased support was very crucial for me. The scholars, you know, oftentimes as, as, you know, individuals, who do we go to first? We go to our scholars first. And so if our scholars are there to help us and support us during this crucial time, it really does boost the morale. It really does help comfort because we look to our scholars for that. And so that was another another good, crucial piece to my support. Um, in you know, in in healing and moving forward, and and doing the things I do. In addition to that, I will say, for me, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala placed a lot of different people. They just randomly just started coming, and you know, I you know I will share that there was a point where you know I was I was it was uh, after divorce that you know I took my children to a actually um, Sheikh Hamza Mathur School Universal Mercy. They had a uh, um, a festival or a school festival that was going on. And so we, we decided to go there and, you know, inside, you know, sometimes inside, although on the outside you see accomplished or you see that this person's doing this or that, but the internal struggles are there. It's, you know, it's not as, it's not as, as, as what it seems yeah, on the outside. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was feeling was I'm, I feel worthless. Like, who am I? right? I'm not loved or I'm not, you know, I don't have this, the support. I don't feel loved. And I really did feel that way. Even despite having all these people around me providing that support, but internally there was this, this emptiness. And I remember I was sitting there and, uh, and this auntie from the community, um, yeah, I, I didn't really interact too much with, but she knew me and, you know, and she walked up to me and she, I was sitting down and she said, she just came up and she just embraced me. And she gave me this longest hug. And she says, I love you. You're, you're, you're like my daughter. I love you. And you'll get through this. And subhanAllah, it was one of those things where it's like only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what I was feeling and what I was going through. And I didn't, I didn't display it outside. You know, it's, but he knew who to send at what moment, at what time to give me that reminder. And just like that, a lot of the nights, a lot of those challenging times, you know, one thing I remember, and, and actually I carry this, um, this lesson and I learned this, um, you know, and I, I, I learned this from, uh, from a scholar that when the prophet وسلم, was, um, in Taif and he was, he وسلم, was getting pelted. You know, he had lost his, his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha. He had lost his biggest supporter, his uncle. And he felt, you know, he وسلم, felt this immense pain. We can't even imagine the pain that he was going through. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, you know, and the, the wahi that was sent down, that we know the condition of your heart. So remember me and be like the people of Sajda. And this has really been a important factor in my healing is a spiritual aspect and the talking to Allah that explaining the, the nights that you cry, the, the difficulties that you go through, because this life is a test. If it's not this, it's going to be something else. And really that, that support, that peace was a crucial part of my healing. The dini aspect was a crucial part of my healing. In addition to that, community. Anywhere I went, people knew that I was divorced. But, you know, one thing that really helped was they didn't look at me in this way that, that you know, that, oh, what, you're divorced? Like my marital status meant respect or my marital status gave me that respect. And community. no, it was people came to me and said, gave me the as, embraced me, told me words of comfort, although. I was smiling and, and really provided that encouragement. And that's that community, wherever you feel that you walk and that you have this community of people coming together, in addition to friends and, and community members and, and, you know, and, and parents, this, this was the reason why I, I do what I'm doing or I am the way I am.
So I would say it's a combination of all of those things. And um, I hope I answered that question, but really that's yeah, very eloquently. Uh, oh. Mashallah. Um, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Sana. That's so deep. SubhanAllah. Um, and Mashallah Tawakkal. And of course, um, you know, there are people who struggle with their faith at this time. There are people that will say, why me? Right? Um, just, just being devil's advocate here, just thinking, you know, some people will reach out and cry more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people will say, hey, but, but, but why me? Um, Saha, um, would you like to answer that? And then Sana can just, you know, people question it. Right. We've mm -hmm. seen that. We see that with the sisters who come to the, our shelters, who are on our helplines, who have general conversations. And like, yeah, you took it and embraced it, mashallah, you know, as an opportunity, like you said, mashallah, you learned from every moment, everything that came your way. And there are those that will say, we'll not do it. Saha, take it away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that the way you put um, your experience, Sister Sana, and the, yeah. you know, different layers of support different um you know individuals and you know feeling that connection that deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gave that gave me goosebumps <laughs> I know it's it's so deep it's much but, yeah Beautiful. yeah for sure um I would say you know I wanted to make a comment about uh the support services or the support um system for the you know individuals who are going through these challenges I'd say Based on my experience working with Nessa and um, the, you know, the um, families at the shelter, the number one reason why they end up going to back to the abuser is family. Um, I, you know, I cannot stress enough the importance of family support and when there's lack of how, you know, how difficult it becomes for these ladies who already have a lot of barriers to, you know, taking these steps. Sometimes it's language, of course, financial is always the case, right? A lot of the clients that we help come from, they're new to the U.S. and, you know, they really have limited experience as far as being on their own. And even those who actually have been in the U.S., sometimes even educated, like Sister Sana said, they may be, you know, stay-at-home moms and haven't worked for so many years. So that some level they're financially dependent. But oftentimes, it's the f when when the ladies decide to go back to the abuser. It's you know, my mom's telling me I need to be more patient. I need to go back. My family's pressuring me. They're telling me that they're you know I'm embarrassed. I I'm an embarrassment to them. And so, unfortunately, I, you know, that that's a really, really important factor. And I, you know, thank you, Sister Sana, for mentioning that and highlighting that. Um, and, and as far as, you know, a loss support, I think I'd say pretty much all of the clients that come to the shelter after they stay at the shelter a few days, um, so often what they tell me is, I had nobody in the U.S., Right, I thought I no, I I didn't have anyone to turn to, and I don't know how people who I've never met they don't know me they're not familiar with my situation, they're giving me a home and support services, and you know and and that oftentimes uh, establishes a connection with Allah and and what I usually respond to that is you know this is from Allah. Right. Allah's opening doors, especially when you're going through these tremendous challenges and your close family members, your loved ones turn you away. You know, this is Allah's way of showing you that, you know, I'm here. You know, I understand and, and, and understand your the ch challenges that you're going through. Right. And Sister Sana, you put it beautifully. Right. And as far as the question about, you know, why me? Why is this happening to me? I think. At some point, there, that's a very, very normal and very common question that we ask, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the answer to that is, you know, we are all tested in different ways. And this is a test from Allah. And I think what was amazing and how Sister Sana mentioned her, described their experiences is that insight, like being even that hug that you, that, you know, you mentioned that community member passing by and giving you a hug and you actually being aware that that was from Allah. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. Oftentimes, you know, I, I believe strongly that Allah continues to send these, 
Fun. You know, the, the love, the support, um, um, just our way. And sometimes we're so like consumed in that negative headspace and understandably, right? And, and, and when we are, sometimes it's difficult to see it. Um, and I think what this was one of the reasons why we at NISA, we have recently, um, or last year actually started um, like more spiritual support and halakha for these sisters, right? Because oftentimes when they're going through so many challenges, that connection with Allah actually is impacted negatively, right? So through these um, uh, bi-weekly halakhas, what we aim to do was try to rebuild and reconnect these ladies to Allah so that they are aware and they are able to actually pay attention to these you know, these signs that are actually sent from Allah, right? But I'd say as far as at some point when we're going through, especially some of these clients who've gone through abuse for many years or multiple relationships, right? They're abused by their parents, they get married and they think this is a way out and then they find their husbands abusing, right? So it's very easy for us to ask like, why is this happening to me? And I think, again, that's where, we come in, right, as community members, how do we support these individuals and really help them see that, you know, we are, if we're helping, it's, it's actually from Allah, right? Yeah, you know, Sister Hot so I, I liked how you put that in terms of like, you know, the community, you know, we have people that are coming and they don't have that. And I want to just add to that where our dealings, our dealings is what really drives people right? It drives people to Islam or drives them away from Islam. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ was sent down to perfect our character. People see our character and either come closer to Allah and either or go away, right? And so really the, the idea, it's like, you know, it's just, there's layers, there's layers to this. The one aspect, you know, in terms of the mental health support or being self-aware, I wanted to highlight that, you know, in this is the piece of the education piece where, you know, while we are doing these support services in terms of like co-parenting, um, you know, etiquettes of divorce, all the post-divorce care that we're doing, we're also f not only focusing on that, but focusing on the pre. Mm -hmm. And pre-divorce is, is essentially, and, and, you know, we have, we've had this and Sheikh Jabra has led this, is emotional intelligence. And it really starts from ourselves. It starts from within us. We have to learn about us. We have to learn about our ways. And that's where all the mental health support also comes in. Because sometimes we do need help. All of us need help. Mm -hmm. You know, therapists have therapists. And, you know, we, that is all within our deen. It's all within just to seek out counsel, to seek out that help and that support to get you on your journey. So really, along with all of our services that we're doing for the post-divorce care, we also are focusing on the pre, where we do emotional intelligence classes. We do premarital classes as well. We do workshops on self-confidence, self-worth. Um, so we do all of that education piece, and that's where it's important, because that's where we're supporting our individuals. Now, whether you get to divorce or you stay in your marriage, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We need to start there. And not only that, in addition to, you know, people asking why, it's because who, who's helping them? Who's, who's coming to them? Who's providing them that support? If we're shunning them away, then you know what? That is a natural response. It's like, I'm going through all of this. Everybody's, everybody's having a dandy time or having a great time. But, you know, so it, it really does start from there where we, you know, and I will say there are there are a lot of women that do attempt suicide because of this, because you have family telling them this concept of sabr when they are being abused day and night. We have women that come that are beaten, blacked and blue, and their parents tell them have sabr. No, this is not the this is not what sabr is in our deen. And actually, to to talk about that, we've heard a lot about that. A lot of these questions come up. What does it mean to be having to have sabr in this situation? And we actually will, inshallah, have a workshop on breaking down that concept Islamically. Um, to you know, and so, so that, that, that just just to um, just just um, intersect here. It's, we actually had Maryam Amir Ibrahimi talk about the concept of sabr, right? Saha, just a 
in our last talk exactly that we we get that so much where you know your elders will say or somebody will say just have sabr have patience what does that mean ultimately and mashallah she quoted from the quran hadith everything mashallah and just kind of laid it out there um subhanallah so um you're you're absolutely right i mean these are each question and everything that we're talking about, another question kind of comes and, and is, you know, and, and I know we can go on and on for, for a long time, but I know, subhanAllah, we are coming up to an hour already. And I, like I said, I value your time um, and everything that you've shared with us. I just want to kind of, just kind of want to discuss finally, like your current and future goals, inshallah. Um, and of course, how the community can support. And then just you know closing words of, of wisdom although you've shared a lot of wisdom with us mashallah just of course raising the the future generation and you have you know i have kids mashallah we all have children and hopefully those who are watching or will watch later um will want to know about how we can you know about how we can raise our children in a you know more more effectively inshallah and for them to be more in tune and be more um you know um open to, to to therapy and and all that other stuff that is that is good to maintain harmony in their relationships inshallah so a lot i've just thrown a lot at you if you want i can kind of backtrack but i just wanted to say for now your current and future goals inshallah what what are they yeah so jazakallah khairan for that um so you know our mission you know really our vision really is to create a movement to cultivate a collective community mindset and helping our most vulnerable populations in our community, within our community to achieve the success and wellness in all levels of life. So with that said, our goals are to be able to create this community, create this domino effect within our, our elders, our, the generation that we're in, our children's generation, and then our future generation. Um, so that's really our, our main goal. But, you know, just in general, as our organization, our goals are to be able to provide a holistic care of support. So what that looks like is providing not only workshop and education, but mental health services, because that is part of that religious services, because that is also part of that healing support spaces, and also be able to provide the pockets of um, services of just like financial aspects, because that's it. That is number one. That is a lot of, a lot of situations are, are, are that, you know, and when you have the finances or you have the means to do something, you are able to thrive a little bit more. It's just, that's just how, how it is. And, um, and so we, we want to be able to provide that financial support as well to our, to those that are mm-hmm. suffering to this. And we also want to provide, um, some sort of navigation in the legal aspect and help support individuals that are going through those challenges. So really we're working on a you know, right now we're working on a divorce care package and we're really going to need our community support to come together because we, because oftentimes the people that need these services are not able to fund the services. And so we do need to have our community come together, you know, back. Divorce was not immune just to our society. It was in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But how did they take care of one another? There was a system and nobody, no woman actually, you know, of course, some, some men as well, but no woman feared her livelihood um, when she got divorced because back then the system was if she was divorced, the, the father happily took her back, took care of her, either the father, if not the father, then the brother, if not the brother, then, you know, then the, the cousins, the uncles. And then if not any of the family members, then the community came together. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to be able to create so much so that if a sister, if, if a woman is getting abused or if her children are getting abused or whatever the case is to leave that, that she doesn't fear her financial situation or fear that she doesn't have support, that she'll go back into that. So we want to be able to create that. So that's really our our goals right now is to create such a package that we want to be able to have our, our, our members come to us and be able to have this holistic support. So that's currently our goal. Um, we hope that in the future, inshallah, that we're able to implement these. Um, we hope that, you know, and also as, you know, as an organization, funding is crucial for us to continue. I want to be able to, we want to be able to pay those that are working for us. And um, I know a lot of times in the community, we do have a lot of burnout um, with all of our members and we want to be able to honor that and be able to honor the time of our, of our profession. Um, so, sorry, I don't know if I cut off, but, uh, but that's, that's sort of our goals right now. Um, and, uh, inshallah, we hope to continue our therapy services as well. And also in person right now, they are virtual, um, in the future also, inshallah, we are looking to, um, start something where we are able to provide parents 
with how to work with their children and how to navigate those challenges time. So parent consultations um, for for uh, for our parents um, in dealing with that. Um, so that's that's sort of our, our goal and our outlook right now currently. Um, you know, we, we hope to increase that. We hope to um, support individuals now in terms of just a parting parting way for our generations is as parents, I would encourage our parents to be to lend a listening ear. You know, we know, I, you know, I'm a parent as well. And oftentimes we, we tend to think, oh, we've had, we've had lives of experience and we have, we have had a life of experience, but our children are growing and they're looking at us. And so one of the biggest ways to teach our children is to show them. So I would encourage our parents to, to provide a safe space where their children are coming to them and sharing them sharing their struggles and their thoughts with them. And I would encourage our parents to, to hear it with an opening mind, with an open mind in an understanding way. Um, and for our, for those that are going through the divorce or going through a challenge, any challenging time, ask Allah, even if you are not able to say the words out of your mouth, Allah is still listening to you. We are often taught the fear of Allah before we are taught the love of Allah. But just like the bird that goes out without any risk comes back with that. Know that risk just doesn't just mean money. It also means love and all the other needs that you need. So Allah is listening to you. Don't feel that you're alone because he is there and he will send you whatever you need. So I would, I would encourage our people that are going through that struggle to remember that Allah loves you and that the mercy he's bestowing upon you, you can't even imagine. Um, and to our youth, you know, I would encourage you to find ways to be supportive, not only outside, you know, in our community, it's easier to go outside and, and provide that support, but also provide that support inside your homes as well. Because a lot of times some parents do learn from their children. Um, so that's sort of my parting ways and my um, my advice to everyone. It's beautiful, Sana Mashallah. You have shared so many gems, beautiful words of ad advice. Uh, you have a wealth of knowledge, Mashallah, experience. And um, thank you so much for just having this really just naturally flowing conversation with you today and um, just a candid, honest, open conversation. I, I really appreciate it. And I really would encourage, um, of course, for us to continue to collaborate with you. Alhamdulillah, we're so blessed. We learned so much more about Vasila Connections. And if people would like to go visit your website, it's um, www.vasilaconnections.org. It's, it's, um, it's actually www.vasilaconnect.org. Dot org. Okay, mashallah. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I would encourage more people to go and visit the website. There is, mashallah, of course, so many amazing resources there. And I'm hoping, you know, we will also continue to collaborate with Vasila um, as well. Uh, Sahal, do you have any any ending thoughts? Do you have anything to share? Well, aside from, I, again, Sister Sana's put, put it so beautifully as far as the hold more of a holistic approach. I think Nessa has also been working on providing more of a holistic um, approach as far as support services go. We have been, you know, we're looking to, um, I myself, Alhamdulillah, now that we have Sister Faiza and we have, um, you know, another staff member, Sister Kaniz, um, I'm able to focus more on client services, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so definitely, you know, more focus in the upcoming years towards client services and also preventive um, uh, services that focus on preventing domestic violence in the community. And that may be education as far as, you know, community members, you know, I urge each of you to talk about domestic violence, take a strong stance against domestic violence, especially for the new generation, right? They are looking at us. And seeing if we, you know, address it or respond to it as a private matter, something that we don't want to get involved in or talk about, our kids will do the same. So the more you are proactive, um, the higher the chance that our children, right, your children will be. And that's critical in this, you know, in this fight against domestic violence. 
And of course, you know, as Nissa is growing as far as staff and our services, the financial support is always appreciated. And this goes very far because, you know, one thing that I usually tell the clients when they, you know, thank me as far as, you know, providing the services, being there for them and nobody else has been, I, every time I make a, you know, I highlight the fact that, you know, if it wasn't for the community support, we wouldn't be able to provide the services that we do. Um, and alhamdulillah, I'm honored to be sort of on the front line as far as providing the services. And now we have, you know, Sister Faiza and Sister Kaniz as well. Um, but the financial support of the community, without it, we wouldn't be able to survive. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We need to keep, you know, those light bulbs on literally in the in the shelters that we have for for the sisters and also we just want to make sure we have um, you know the resources that we can continue to provide for them we are non-profit subhanallah and the community money is amana as well so we like to spend wisely we want to make sure that we meet the needs of of, of those um, community members inshallah and 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 you know we spend wisely and we make sure that um, the needs are met, inshallah. But I just wanted to once again thank you so much, um, um, Sister Sana, for your time, Sister Saha, for your time. It really was um, a very a fulfilling conversation, honestly. Um, thank you very much for your time, wisdom you've shared, your experiences, and inshallah, I'm hoping we will continue to educate the community and continue to collaborate together inshallah to kind of leverage each other in and, and and help one another inshallah in the best possible way anything else you'd like to end with um sister sana yes i i do want to i do request that the community also you know i want everyone to know that this this is a collaborative effort right as as muslims you know we you know yes one person you know it takes one person a vision but it takes everyone to come together and actually provide such a such a um, support that that is needed and it takes collective hands and so I encourage everyone to, you know I actually request everyone to make the offer our team as well um, really I know I'm you know I am the founder but I wouldn't have been able to do this without my team members um, so please you know we do have interns we do have you know our our core members and um, so do make the offer them um, they are they are integral part of of making Wasila you know where we are today. Um, so you know, and I would encourage. I would also encourage, uh, actually, you know, that organizations, you know, that we if we hold hands together, we will make larger strides. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, Faiza Jazakalo Khairan for this beautiful opportunity. You know, may Allah bless you and the organization and and the work that you guys are doing as well, and make it uh, Khair for everyone. Mm -hmm. And allowing this opportunity and so I look forward to also collaborating with Nissa and other organizations we have an open door policy of collaborating with everyone and ensuring that the services are are you know the best for our ummah and our community so jazakallah khair and, um, and keep us in your I mean, Jazakallah Khair and um, Sister Sana. Thank you so much, Sister Saha. And once again, absolutely, we are at the forefront, but of course we have board members, we have integral other members, volunteers who are, you know, huge, you know, are a huge part of these organizations. So may Allah, may Allah reward you all for all the time and all the efforts, inshallah, that you put in to um, making things happen in the organizations, inshallah, and within the community. May they continue to be khair in what we do. May Allah accept our intentions. May Allah forgive any shortcomings on our part, inshallah. And jazakallah khair. And thank you so much once again, Saha, Sana, for joining. And um, inshallah, have a wonderful rest of your day, inshallah. We'll speak and connect again soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullah.